Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. I've got quite a lot going on in this week's nightcap. Early on last week, uh, one of my viewers brought that little Stuart Turner steam engine. A little, it's not that little. Brought that Stuart and Turner steam engine, what it was, and I made a start uh, taking it apart. I'll do a little bit of video, like a general overview of it, uh, but I'm not going to get too much involved in the nightcaps. I'm going to do a separate series of videos all about stripping and restoring this engine. Um, there's a lot more to do to it than I was expecting. Uh, I wanted a project and I've certainly got one now. Anyway, a little bit more of that later on. There's some more names coming in for the draw. I'll put them in for next month's draw. Don't forget, if you haven't entered the draw, all you need to do is send me an email. That's my email address up there. And all I need is your name, like John Mills, not just John. Your name goes into the bucket. If it's drawn out, you win the prize absolutely free of charge. This is one of 249 engines that were built. This one's number 224. It's basically designed to run a generating set, a compressor, a cooling fan. It's basically a 1937 version of an electric motor because most places had steam and all it needs is a steam supply to make it work. It's not a model, it's a full-size engine, rated at 2 horsepower at 1000 RPM. It's got a built-in governor, a built-in oil pump, um, completely, or basically, completely sealed high-speed steam engine. I'll bring the camera in, have a look around it, show you all the bits and pieces, and then I'm going to take the cylinder head off and see what evils lie inside there. Uh, the things are quite oily on the outside, so it's looking that's looking promising. That's the exhaust port there, and that is nice and oily, which is also a really good thing. It's got a 12 inch flywheel on the end with a double belt drive. The engine's 22 inches tall and it weighs about 140 pounds. It's quite a heavy unit. That's a dipstick, it's a crankcase door. There's two little valves on here. What these are for, it's in case the sunlight gets water in, they are relief valves that will open to save it damaging the engine. There's a little oil pump there that pumps oil into the cylinder. There's a pipe missing from there. It goes into the top of that governor. Unfortunately, the top's missing and there's quite a lot of crud in there to be cleaned out. That's a steam exhaust port. This is part of the governor mechanism, that's the actual valve in there and that's part of the governor mechanism that appears to be made of brass. That's your steam stop valve. There are cylinder drain valves, when you initially start the engine you open them, let any condensation out and that little tube there connects all the condensation and it runs away down there. There's a little valve there with a pipe on and oil feed. I'm assuming, and that's through that crankcase door. As I said before, the engine is locked solid. Um, just with standing, I don't know, it's probably the piston that got it. But the first thing to do is take the cylinder head off and have a look inside it. Looking around it, all the nuts are intact, they haven't been rounded off, it hasn't been bastardised, it's just been taken out of service and stored. I don't know how much use it's had. Probably not a great lot. So we'll have the head off and see what lives inside of there. I've got a little stainless steel pipe fitting to do. Only one, if it's any more than two or three, I get my friend to do them on the same same machine, but I don't mind doing one or two. I've got a bit of stainless bar, so we'll just carry on and make that.
got no idea what grain of stainless this is. Well, it certainly is stainless. The first dimension is the diameter, the big diameter, which is 20. I think it's just 24. 25. So we'll take two mils straight off that. Right, 20 mil. The next diamond I is 10. Two is chip, but it's doing the job for the minute. We'll change it for its final cut. Speed the feed rate of this cut just so the chips break properly. Nasty stringy bastards, I don't like them. What do you do? You don't go after them with your fingers because they're horrible. Better. See that tip is actually shit, but it's still cutting, so let us a rough it out with that. Right, so that's 10 mil, that's 20 mil. There's a recess port in here and then some threads to go on it. And this part gets turned down to 7 mil. Maybe 10 mil short of the face for the threads.
made some threads on there, the hole drilled through it and then part it off. You wouldn't think I had any spanners, would you? To bulkhead fitness, it goes to a bulkhead on a, a rally car, that's what it's for. And he's going to weld something on at the end of that. He bought a one off eBay, but it was made of brass, it wasn't actually stainless, so he couldn't weld to it. Right. And then we need a hole drilling through there and then that part off. Four mil holes so I can use those little drills from Banggood. The drill set. Nice and gently keep backing off. It's starting to get warm. Stainless is strange stuff. All I want to do is pick up. I'm going to put a smaller drill through just to give it a bit of the swarf, a bit of clearance. It's absolutely horrible lad. What we don't want to do is snap the drill off in the hole. We don't want to snap the drill full stop. Right back with a 4mm one now. People keep asking what sort of cutting oil I'm using. I'm not sure what it is. It was in an oil can or in a can in that old factory that was being demolished. We just had to on cutting oil. I've got about a gallon of it. It certainly seems to work all right. Right, I'm pretty sure that'll be deep enough now. Four mil.
screw the nut onto the, the fit we've just made, just so I can flash the back and put a little shampoo on it. <laughs> 